Hi all my crafty friends and welcome back to Designs by Gaddis. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so glad you found my channel. Be sure to like this video and subscribe. By doing so, you will help others, just like yourself, be able to find my home decor DIY videos. Today I'm making this adorable fabric bunny using a buffalo print bandana I got for 99 cents from Hobby Lobby this past weekend. I had this little bunny cutout that I used as a template. With a black sharpie, I traced the bunny on the back of the fabric. I actually folded the bandana in half before tracing so I would have two bunnies cut just the same. After tracing it, I cut the bunny on the lines that I had traced. And yes, I finally purchased a decent pair of scissors. And I keep reminding myself to use them only on paper and fabric. After I cut the bunny, I have two just the same size. I then put the bunnies together and use pins to hold them in place. And guys, I'm sorry, but for whatever reason, I didn't get the part where I was sewing the bunny with it turned inside out. So I will show you the stitch using this white felt and black string. I sewed the bunny from one foot all the way around to the other foot, leaving the space at the bottom open so I could apply the stuffing. I then started adding the stuffing and used a dowel to get the stuffing up into the ears. After I added the stuffing, I went back around the outside of the bunny to close up any holes. I wanted the bunny to look handmade and rustic. I continued stitching the entire bunny and closed the hole at the bottom. I decided the bunny needed some eyes. I found these two buttons in my stash and sewed them onto the bunny, trying to make sure they were as centered and even as possible. The last thing I did was add a little tail using a Dollar Tree white pom-pom and added a piece of twine around his neck. And look at him, he is so adorable and looks amazing on my spring tier tray. If you haven't already, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel. I upload weekly home decor DIY videos and you know you don't want to miss any of them. So go ahead and hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. To create this adorable bunny butt tiered tray flower pot, I used a Dollar Tree succulent pot and placed a piece of floral foam in the bottom. I cut a piece of Dollar Tree white felt down and used a very small styrofoam ball. I wrapped the felt around the styrofoam ball to create the bunny's butt and used a rubber band to secure the felt to the ball. For the bunny's tail, I used a white Dollar Tree pom-pom and glued it onto the felt. I folded a piece of felt in half and cut out some bunny ears. I actually cut out four ears and glued two of them together to make the ear a little stronger and glued them onto the styrofoam ball. I trimmed down some of the felt at the end of the ball and then glued it into the pot. He needed some feet, so I used another piece of felt and cut feet out and used a marker to draw the pads of the feet. I then glued the bunny feet onto the bunny. For the carrots, I used some floral wire and wood beads. I cut the wire down to size and used three six millimeter beads and two four millimeter beads to create each carrot. 
I left a portion of the wire sticking out at the bottom of the carrot so I could push it into the floral foam. I added a dab of hot glue to keep the beads in place. I then added another dab of glue at the top of each carrot. I used some orange chalk paint and painted the carrots. I then used some of the greenery from this large carrot I had in my stash. I cut a small portion of it off and then glued it to the top of each of the carrots. I made a total of three carrots for this pot. I created the words for my sign in Design Space and used this little Dollar Tree chalkboard sign. And look at how stinking cute this little bunny butt pot turned out. If you haven't already, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel. I upload weekly home decor DIY videos and you know you don't want to miss any of them. So go ahead and hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. I used these two little Dollar Tree buckets that I found in the wedding section to make a couple of tier tray topiaries. I used black and different shades of gray and brown to make a metal looking color for the buckets. I wanted them to look rustic and old. I squeezed each of the colors onto my wax paper side by side. Sorry, I didn't realize this shot was out of frame. I used a sponge and dipped it into the colors on my wax paper and then dabbed some of the excess off and then started dabbing the paint onto the buckets until I was happy with the way they looked. And this actually turned out a little messier than I was expecting. My hands were covered in paint. So if you want to keep your hands clean, I would recommend using some gloves. Next, I took two skewers and painted them with Americana antiquing wax. I've used this wax on several projects now, and I really like it. I like it better than I do the Waverly antiquing wax. It's a little bit lighter, and I like that about it. I used some dark green paint and painted two small styrofoam balls using a stencil brush so I could get into the holes of the styrofoam. I thought I had some loose moss in my stash, but apparently I've used it all up. So I used this sheet moss and removed it from the sheet. It was a rather messy project. I put some glue on the styrofoam ball and then rolled it around in the loose moss. I continued doing this until the styrofoam was completely covered. I would recommend after you have covered your ball to go ahead and add a layer of Mod Podge to help hold all the moss onto the styrofoam. I cut a third styrofoam ball in half and put it in the bottom of each of the buckets. I placed the skewer into the styrofoam and then removed it and added hot glue to the hole and then replaced the skewer. I used Spanish moss to fill in the bottom of the topiaries and trimmed everything up. And just look at how cute these little mini tiered tray topiaries turned out. I just love them. For the next bucket, I left it white and added some twine to the bottom up to the first line on the bucket. I cut another styrofoam ball in half and placed it in the bottom of the bucket like before. I cut the blooms off of these two floral picks from Dollar Tree and inserted them into the styrofoam ball. I finished the bucket off with some Spanish moss and I trimmed it.
And just look at how sweet it turned out. It will look amazing on my tiara tray. If you haven't already, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel. I upload weekly home decor DIY videos and you know you don't want to miss any of them. So go ahead and hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. To find an image I liked, I went to Google and searched for bunny with crown coloring pages. I then clicked on images. I searched the images until I found one that I liked. And I saved it to my computer. Next, I went to PicMonkey, created new, scrolled down to 8x10 print size, and clicked on it. I loaded the file I had just saved from my computer into PicMonkey. Once the image was loaded, I clicked Remove Background and resized the file on the canvas to fit an 8x10 canvas. Before saving the new file, I made the background transparent. I went to the file I just saved and printed it. For the painting, I am using Master's Touch acrylic paint from Hobby Lobby, but you can use any acrylic or craft paint. I mixed white and blue together to create the background. Since I was painting a larger area, I used a two inch brush for the background. With the acrylic paint I'm using, you have to keep it wet. So, I dipped my brush into the water to add a little water to the paint. And then painted the canvas, including the sides. I painted years ago and forgot how relaxing it can be. I didn't do much painting on canvas. I did hand-painted wood signs and really, really enjoyed doing them. I used my hot air gun to dry the canvas. You can use a hair dryer or allow the canvas to dry on its own. I used a piece of carbon paper to trace the image onto the canvas. I placed the carbon paper onto the canvas and then placed the image on top of it. After I aligned the image on the canvas, I used a piece of painter's tape to hold the image in place while I traced it. I used a pencil and traced the outline of the bunny. At this time, I'm not tracing the flower and I didn't trace the details in the ears. And this is what the traced image looked like on the canvas. I originally was going to paint the bunny pink but decided to go with gray. I mixed white and red together to create paint for the ears. I painted the inside of the ears and used my hot air gun to dry the paint. And then added a second layer to the ears. I used burnt umber for the eyes and the outline. And continue painting the bunny. I didn't like the paint, but kept going with it thinking I would like it by the end. When I finished, I realized I didn't like the pink at all. So I mixed up some white and burnt umber to create a gray color. I used the gray on the entire bunny, except for the inside of the ears. I left them pink. And I did paint over the trace lines but I could see them through the gray so I could go back over them later. After drying the gray with my hot air gun, I went back in with burnt umber and traced the lines. I tried to keep the lines thin, but as you can see, that wasn't the case in all the areas. 
I used white on the eyes to give it a little gleam and then went back in with the different colors to thin the outlines. Add whiskers and to touch up the paint. When I was finished, I used a little storage bottle to save the excess pink paint because I had actually mixed up way too much. I allowed the paint to dry overnight. I lined up the printed bunny as close as I could and traced over the flowers and the leaves. For the flowers and leaves, I experimented with different mixtures of colors. For the leaves, I mixed white, green, and yellow. And then painted them in. I wanted to use some of the original pink I had mixed up, so I used some of it and mixed it with blue and red to get this purple, and started painting in the purple flower. I started with yellow for the sunflower, but it was just too transparent, so I added a little white and painted over the yellow flower. I mixed red and white again to get a reddish pink color for the rose. I added some white to the leaf green to create a lighter green for the veins and the leaves. I used some burnt umber to add some hair to the inside of the ears and used the dry brush method to give some dimension to the bunny's body. I also used the burnt umber to give the rose some dimension. I mixed the burnt umber, light green and red to create the brown for the sunflower. And I just kept playing with the flowers until I was happy with the painting. I love this little bunny painting, and I can't believe I did it myself. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned that it's not that hard to paint. You can find all kinds of videos on YouTube that will show you more. I just wanted to show you what I came up with for this spring. If you haven't already, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel. I upload weekly home decor DIY videos and you know you don't want to miss any of them. So go ahead and hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. Today, I'll be turning this Dollar General sign into a cute spring and Easter tiered tray sign. I actually got this sign for half price last year. It was 75 cents, and you can't beat that. I used a pair of pliers and removed the metal piece from the front. I wanted to remove the paper from the picture so I could paint it. I used rubbing alcohol in a scraper and started removing the paper from the picture. It took some work, but I eventually got all the paper and glue residue off. And then used my hot air gun to dry it. I decided to paint the picture with brown acrylic paint first and then I used white chalk paint. I'm running low on white chalk paint so I poured some onto the picture and painted it. At first I thought the sign was actually wood but it was actually hard pressed cardboard. So the alcohol made some of the edges of the picture swell up. I decided to use tumbling tower blocks to create a frame around the edge so it would cover up the swelling. 
I use this Americana wax to stain the blocks. I just love this wax. It's a light color and perfect for most of my projects. I then hot glued the blocks onto the picture. I had to use a miter box and saw to cut down two of the blocks. And I had to get my hubby to do it because I got so frustrated. It was my first time using a miter box. I created this cute cut file using Inkscape. I am currently learning Inkscape and plan on starting a series to show you how you can create your own cut files using Inkscape. If you are interested in learning, I'll leave a link in the description so you will be notified when I start the series. I'll also leave a link in the description for the cut file or the pre-cut vinyl. I layered the different pieces onto the transfer paper and then applied it to the sign. I then applied gloss Mod Podge to the entire picture frame. And just look at how stinking cute this little Tierre Tray sign turned out. I just love it. If you haven't already, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel. I upload weekly home decor DIY videos and you know you don't want to miss any of them. So go ahead and hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. I used two of these Dollar Tree metal flowers to create two amazing wall hangings. The first thing I did was remove the stems from both of the metal flowers by bending them back and forth until they broke. Next, I bent the flower petals up so I could get under them with paint. Be careful when you do this not to bend them until they break, just enough to get your paintbrush under. I used black chalk paint to cover all of the bright colors on the flowers. I'm just not a bright color person. I prefer neutral colors and wanted these to look like they were worn metal flowers with a little rust. I used my hot air gun to dry the metal flowers. I love this air gun. It saves me so much time when I'm working on projects. I'll leave a link to the hot air gun I use on a daily basis and highly recommend for anyone looking to purchase one. To create the worn look I was going for, I used three different colors of acrylic and chalk paint. Elephant gray, nutmeg brown, and pearl white. I simply placed a small dab of each color on my wax paper. And then used a Dollar Tree makeup sponge and dipped it into all three colors at the same time. I dabbed off the extra paint and began dabbing the paint covered sponge onto the flower until I was happy with the metallic look. And again used my hot air gun to dry the paint. I used a picture box and removed the picture from the wood frame. I like the color of the frames so I left them as is. I turned the picture upside down and painted the back with white chalk paint. Since I'm running low on white chalk paint, I poured some on the board and began painting. I did use two coats for a more even coverage. And of course, used my hot air gun once again. I used a sanding block to smooth the paint and remove the excess paint from the edges so the board would fit back into the frame. I then used rubbing alcohol to remove the sand dust from the board. To create the ship lap look, I used a Dollar Tree square and lined it up with the top of the board. I first used a pencil to draw all the lines. You could leave it with the light pencil lines, but I wanted thicker, bolder lines. So, I used a Dollar Tree eyelining brush and some Elephant Grace chalk paint to go over the pencil lines. I have found that Dollar Tree makeup brushes make amazing paintbrushes. I pick up more of them with every trip I make to Dollar Tree. I then sanded the frame 
and removed all the staples and parts of paper that stuck when I removed the back. I used hot glue on the sides and placed the board onto the frame. I had a few places where the glue leaked onto the front of the board, so I used my X-Acto knife to cut the glue and remove it. I put some hot glue on the back metal bar of the flower and glued them to the center of each frame. And just look at how adorable these bright orange flowers turned out. If you haven't already, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel. I upload weekly home decor DIY videos and you know you don't want to miss any of them. So go ahead and hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. Today I will be using two Dollar Tree picture frames and some wood from Hobby Lobby to make a spring two-tier tray. The first thing I did was take the glass out of the larger frame and placed it on top of the wood. I used a pencil and traced the size I needed for the base of the tear tray. I was able to get four pieces out of these two pieces of wood. That is what I needed for the bottom of the tear tray. I took the wood outside and cut it down using a miter saw. After cutting the wood, I flipped the frame over to make sure the pieces would fit, and they fit perfectly. For the top tray, I used eight large craft sticks and cut them down to fit in the second frame. When cutting the craft sticks, make sure you are using something sharp and cut slowly to make sure you don't crack or break the stick. I used the back of a larger frame for the bottom of the top tray. I laid the glass on top and traced it with a pencil and then cut it down to size. I used clear Gorilla Glue and hot glue to attach the craft sticks to the backing. I put the Gorilla Glue in the center of each craft stick and then put hot glue on both sides of the Gorilla Glue. Then press the craft sticks onto the backing. I continued doing this until all of the craft sticks had been attached to the backing. I sat the top tray on the floor with a stack of books on it for it to dry. For the bottom tray, I used the back of the original frame to attach the boards to, and basically did the same process I had used on the top tray, using Gorilla Glue and hot glue. I allowed both trays to dry for 24 hours. While the wood dried, I took both of the frames outside and spray painted them with white chalk spray paint. I did this so the coverage would be smooth. After the wood had dried, I used some Americana wax to stain both of them. I used a Dollar Tree makeup brush to apply the stain. I have found that Dollar Tree's makeup brushes are great for painting and staining. I will usually pick a few up every trip I make to Dollar Tree. I used a paper towel to remove the excess wax and my air gun to dry the wax quicker. I used matte Mod Podge on top of the stain to help protect it. I used more of the Gorilla Glue to attach the wood to the inside of the frame. For the feet, I used these little square blocks from Dollar Tree and used the same wax to stain them. I again used Gorilla Glue to attach the feet to all four corners of the bottom tray. I left it to dry for about four hours. For the middle section of the trays, I used a spindle from Lowe's and cut it down. I then used the same wax to stain it. I found the center of the bottom tray and marked it with a pencil. 
I also found the center of the top tray and marked it. And that is when my camera battery died and I didn't realize it. But after I found the center of both trays, I drilled a small pilot hole in each tray and attached them with screws. One going through the top of the top tray and another in the bottom of the bottom tray. And this is what the tray turned out like and I just love it. By using the screws instead of glue, the tray doesn't move at all and it's very sturdy. So I'm not afraid to put something a little heavier on it unlike some of the other tier trays I have made. And just look at how cute some of my new spring decor looks on it. If you haven't already, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel. I upload weekly home decor DIY videos and you know you don't want to miss any of them. So go ahead and hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. Today, I'm going to show you step by step how I make my tiered tray wood tags. The wood I use is from Hobby Lobby. It's not too thick, but it is thick enough to stand on its own without support. This is a template I made at Christmas when I was doing a lot of tier tray wood tags. I used a paper tag to create the template and I use it to make all my tags down. I laid the template on the wood and trace around it with a pencil. It's not perfect, but it does give me an idea of where to cut it. I usually use my miter saw to cut the wood, but I'm going to show you how you can use a miter box and a saw to cut the tags. Place the tag in the miter box and try to get your cut line as close as you can to the 45 degree angle mark. Place the saw into the 45 degree slot and align your wood. I use a wood clamp to hold the wood and attach it where it won't be in the way when I saw. I made sure my fingers are out of the way and saw the wood at the angle on the first side. I removed the clamp and moved the wood to the other side. Lined it up, tightened the clamp, and began sawing. This second piece was easier than the first for some reason. Didn't take nearly as long. I removed the clamp again and aligned the top of the wood with the straight cut slot, clamped it down, and began sawing. I have this scrap piece of wood that I use when I'm drilling holes. So I placed it on my work table and used a large drill bit to drill the hole. I used a piece of 220 sandpaper and sanded the tag. I also used an X-Acto knife to remove the pieces of wood from the hole I drilled. I painted the front and sides of the tag with two coats of white chalk paint and used my hot air gun to dry between coats and to finish. If you do a lot of crafting and don't have a hot air gun, you don't know what you're missing. I love mine. It really helps speed up the drying time. I'll leave a link in the description for the hot air gun I use on a daily basis and highly recommend. I created this welcome spring cut file using Inkscape. I am learning how to use Inkscape and will be starting an Inkscape series this year. If you want to learn how to create your own cut files, I'll leave a link in the description so you will be notified when I start the series. I'll also leave a link where you can get the cut file or the pre-cut vinyl below. I removed the vinyl using transfer tape and applied it to the tag. As you can see, I had a problem with the W. It didn't come up with the rest of the vinyl. I left it on the paper and applied the vinyl without it. 
and then placed the W on the tag, making sure it lined up with everything else. Next, I used my iron trick. I placed a thin piece of fabric on the tag and used my iron to heat up the vinyl so it could melt into the cracks and crevices of the wood. Be careful when doing this to not let the vinyl get too hot. If you do, it will stick to the fabric and peel up. I then painted the tag with matte Mod Podge to give it a finished look and to protect it. I used my hot air gun again to dry the Mod Podge. You could leave your tag just like this, but I wanted to add a piece of lavender and a ribbon to mine. I used this lavender sprig from Dollar Tree. I cut a piece of the bloom off and then cut it down smaller. I then fed some ribbon through the hole and tied a knot. I was going to cut a dovetail end on the ribbon, but cut it the wrong way. But I actually liked it. Sometimes mistakes are good. I used hot glue to attach the lavender to the tag. And just look at how stinking cute this Welcome Spring Tierra Tray tag turned out. If you haven't already, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel. I upload weekly home decor DIY videos and you know you don't want to miss any of them. So go ahead and hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. Hi all my crafty friends and welcome back to Designs by Gaddis. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so glad you found my channel. Be sure to like this video and subscribe. By doing so, you will help others, just like yourself, be able to find my home decor DIY videos. Today, I will show you some of the new bathroom decor I have been putting together for my hall slash guest bath. I used this Dollar Tree soap dispenser and made it look a little less blah. The first thing I did was spray the glass with rubbing alcohol to remove all the oils and dirt. Then I used a paper towel to rub it off. I created this cut file using Inkscape and then transferred it to Design Space so I could cut it out. I plan to start an Inkscape series this year. If you would like to learn how to use Inkscape to make your own cut files, I'll leave a link in the description so you can be notified when I start that series. I used transfer tape to apply the vinyl to the soap dispenser. I created a small bow using some buffalo plaid ribbon and used hot glue to attach it. And like I said, I'm in the process of creating new decor for my hall bath. Be sure you like this video and subscribe so you don't miss any of the projects that I'm putting together. And just look at how cute the soap dispenser turned out. And it took me less than 10 minutes to do. I used this Dollar Tree sign to create a cute bathroom sign. I used my square to cut off the bottom portion of the sign. I will be using a miter saw and cut the sign on the black line I just drew. I used a sanding block to remove the glitter from the sign. While I was removing the glitter, I realized the sanding sponge was also removing a lot of the color, which was great. I continued doing this until all of the glitter was gone and the board was smooth. After the glitter was removed, I took the board and cut it using a miter saw to remove the flag part at the bottom. I decided to paint the sign with black chalk paint first. I also painted the wood at the top of the sign black. I used my hot air gun to dry the paint. Then I taped off the top board and painted the rest of the sign with white chalk paint. I did use two coats of white chalk paint for an even coverage and used my hot air gun to dry everything. 
I used my X-Acto knife to cut where the paint met the tape and then removed the tape from the top of the sign. I used this Be The Change cut file I found on Design Bundles and applied it to the sign using transfer tape. I will leave a link to this cut file in the description below if you want to try your hand at this project. I then used my iron trick to heat up the vinyl and allow it to melt into the cracks and crevices of the sign. Be careful when you do this so you won't overheat and melt the vinyl. I don't know if you can see, but the vinyl has melted into the cracks and crevices of the wood just enough so it appears sort of hand painted. The next step was to add matte Mod Podge to the entire front of the sign. This will give your sign more of a finished look and it helps protect it. I added a piece of buffalo ribbon to the top of the sign so it would match the other items I've already made for my bath. I cut the ribbon down to size and then placed a small piece of tape to hold the center of the ribbon in place. I flipped the sign over and hot glued the ribbon to the back of the sign. And just look at how stinking cute this little sign turned out. Today I'll be showing you how I made this beautiful farmhouse beaded garland with a tassel. It's perfect to add a touch of farmhouse decor to your home. My favorite colors are black, gray, and white, so this beaded garland will look amazing in my home. This is a pretty simple DIY, and it's easy enough for a beginner to give it a try. The first thing I did was paint this little wood tag with Waverly Elephant chalk paint. I painted the front, back, and the edges, and I used my hot air gun to dry it quicker. Once I was finished with the elephant paint, I added a layer of ivory chalk paint. I used two coats of the ivory and again used my hot air gun to dry it. If you aren't using a hot air gun, you are really missing out. I got this one from Amazon a few months ago and I love it. It saves me so much time doing projects. I'll leave a link in the description for the hot air gun I use and recommend to anyone looking to purchase one. Once I was finished painting, I used a sanding block from Dollar Tree to rough up the edges and smooth out the paint. I used rubbing alcohol and a paper towel to remove the dust after I sanded. it. The rubbing alcohol dries pretty quick, that's why I use it instead of just water. I found this cut file in a bundle I purchased from Design Bundles and sized it down to fit my tag. I get most of my cut files from Design Bundles and recommend them for any project you may have in mind. The pricing is the lowest I can find and the files are amazing. If you get a bundle, you save a ton of money. They also have a ton of free cut files. I'll also leave a link in the description for Design Bundles. I transferred the vinyl onto the wood tag. I used 16 millimeter and 14 millimeter wood beads I got from Amazon. These natural wood beads are wonderful. I just love them. I used 11 16 millimeter and 10 14 millimeter for this project. I placed five of the 16 millimeter beads on a skewer and painted them using the same Waverly Elephant paint I used on my tag. I then placed six of the 16 millimeter beads onto another skewer and painted them with black acrylic paint. I placed all the 14 millimeter beads on the skewer and painted them with the ivory chalk paint I had used on the tag. I again used my hot air gun to dry the beads quicker. To string the beads, I used a roll of what looked like kite string and began stringing them in a pattern. I'm running low on twine, but I would recommend using twine to string the beads if you have enough. The pattern I used was black, white, gray, white, and then repeated it until I was out of beads. This gave me a garland that is about 12 inches long. I used a piece of twine and ran it through the hole in my tag and then tied it onto the white string with the beads. I used a piece of ribbon and made a simple bow and glued it onto the twine. 
This helped to cover the white string I used for the beads. For the tassel, I used the same ribbon as I used for the bow and a thicker twine. I cut the ribbon and twine to create the tassel. I layered the tassel and then used a piece of thinner twine to tie the tassel in the middle to hold everything together. I then tied the twine to the white string with the beads. I used more of the thicker twine to create the top of my tassel. I glued the twine to the top of the tassel and then started wrapping it around the tassel until I was happy with the way it looked. When I was finished, I used a dab of glue to hold the tassel together. I then trimmed the tassel up so everything was the same length. Today I have a cute project for your bathroom, something that will entertain your guests while they're in there. I found this cute cut ball from Craft House. It was actually a free download. I will leave a link in the description below for this cut file. I wanted the picture to look like it was on wood slats. So I cut off the ends of a bunch of craft sticks from Dollar Tree. I'm still finding the ends all over my craft ring. I used an 11 by 14 inch frame from Dollar Tree. I took the wrapping off and then removed the back. I used my hot glue gun to glue all the craft sticks onto the back of the frame. I staggered the sticks for more of a realistic look. After I had most of the sticks attached, I trimmed the edges, being careful so I wouldn't crack the sticks on the board. After cutting the bottom, I used the smaller pieces to fill in the bare spots of the board. I continued cutting the sticks until they were all the same size as the back of the frame. This is a good time to go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I had one stick that just wouldn't fit, so I added hot glue to fill it in. I tried to apply the hot glue at the same height as the sticks. After the glue dried, it was time to paint all the craft sticks. I used ivory chalk paint and painted the entire front of the boards. I then used my hot air gun to dry the paint quicker. And it did take two layers of chalk paint to cover the boards evenly. I cut and weeded the cut ball. I had to use an oversized mat since this was such a large file. It measured over 11 and a half inches, which means you can't cut it on a regular mat. Since this was such a large cut, I removed the paper from the top only and applied it to the sign. I slowly worked my way down and across using this method. By doing this, I didn't have to worry about the vinyl not laying right or having part of the vinyl stick in places I didn't want it. I think it's time to change my knife and my Cricut. I had a really hard time trying to get the vinyl off the paper. Some of the letters just didn't want to work with me and I think it is because my knife has gotten dull. I could not tell you the last time I changed it. And I finally got the vinyl onto the sign. I used my iron to heat up the vinyl and work it into the cracks and crevices of the wood. I do this trick with all my wood and vinyl projects. Next, I inserted the back into the frame I left the glass part of the frame in the frame because I wanted people to be able to mark the words they found using a dry eraser pen. I just thought it would be fun to be able to mark on the glass and then wipe it off as needed. I had a dry erase marker and decided to attach it to the frame. 
I used a piece of twine and placed a dab of hot glue to the lid of the pen. I wrapped the twine around the pen several times and then secured the end with hot glue. I left a long piece of twine so it would hang from the frame and still have enough room to mark on the frame. I applied some hot glue directly to the frame to hold the twine. I then placed the end of another piece of twine on top of the string and began wrapping it around itself. I felt like this would hold the pin and the twine better. I decided the frame needed something else to decorate it a little. I decided to make a small messy bow because that's the only type of bow I can do. I cut several pieces of black and white ribbon and twine down to size. I layered them and then tied them in the middle with another piece of twine. I realized the bow was larger than I really wanted, so I cut it down until I was happy with the size. And then I glued it to the top of the little circle I had made. This was a really fun project, and I'm sure my guests are going to enjoy playing this while they're in my bathroom. If you haven't already, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel. I upload weekly home decor DIY videos, and you know you don't want to miss any of them. So go ahead and hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And as always, thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting!